Well, I was going to wrap up my TNA content for the weekend, uh, but then I, I woke up to this and, and decided, you know, I could take a little bit of time to, to speak on it because my, my guy, Mike Gilbert, uh, breaking the internet here, uh, <laughs> Jordan Grace's feed came across my, my Twitter when I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh, my, oh, my Lord. So Mike Gilbert, my guy from the Mike and JD show, he tweets out, according to Jordan Grace, the Earl Hebner surprise was as good as Daniel Bryanson's AEW debut at All Out. Because Earl Hebner was the big surprise reveal. Hope she becomes a jobber in WWE now. So, first of all, Mike is my guide. Mike is very sarcastic. You know, he's not throwing LOLs and all that shit. but uh he does not hope she becomes a jobber in wwe like it's just it's just sar sarcasm so jordan responds never said this <laughs> but do apologize for the lack of surprise could have never been predicted a global tech outage canceling thousands of flights several wrestlers including my husband could not make it i regret trying to hype up the show with that statement sorry guys and chelsea green is in the comments jordan in all caps, how could you? You should have known the entire world was shut down the day before Slam. Can you not see into the future? What the fuck? Um, <laughs> so then uh, my guy at Talking TNA said, I was generally concerned a lot more. Wouldn't be able to make it. We're lucky the card wasn't too impacted. And Jordan said management worked so hard to make sure as many people as possible. They made, what, what does she write? Make sure as many people made it as possible so much time and expense a dozen wrestlers drove 12 plus hours overnight nightmare travel situation before such a big event yeah and, and she's not wrong i mean shit i leave for my uh honeymoon in the morning tomorrow you think uh you think we're not uh tripping about uh, what could potentially happen to us i mean i might be right back here uh tomorrow night talking to you guys again for for all that i know so um, you know, it's it's definitely a thing, and we're fortunate that really Jonathan Gresham was the only person impacted when we we're watching the show. Now, is Jordan saying here, yeah, we did have some surprises planned, they didn't pan out? Maybe. It's also a convenient excuse if you want it to be, but you know, uh, it, it is it is very possible that there was there was something planned uh, that didn't didn't pan out. I don't know where they would have fit fit it in. I don't have the first uh, the first idea of where they could have possibly inserted any kind of surprises into this thing. So, you know, I, I applaud Jordan for not totally ripping Mike's head off because uh, a lot of the time she does uh, respond to people and act that way. <laughs> so, so Mike got it easy. The fans and the in the in the uh, responses and the comments are, are, are not as nice to him uh, because they don't know him like I do. But um, Jordan, Jordan definitely took it easy on him. And last night when I was reviewing the show, that wasn't something I totally took into consideration that there might've been some travel issues, but apparently that was the case. So if there are going to be some kind of uh, surprises, then maybe they will, they will pop up at some point. Um, at the set of tapings or, or I don't know. I've had an opportunity to sleep on things regarding last night's Slammiversary. I, rec I uh, recorded a review right after the show. And I guess I incorrectly assumed that Giselle Shaw won the opening match because I didn't get a chance to watch it. And I guess Tasha Steele did. Uh, but that really doesn't change uh, my overall impression of the show that they really booked it for the live audience. I mean, I'm very surprised surprised they didn't have Giselle Shaw win there but they kind of booked it for the live audience it was it was a weird show it was a good show it was just a weird show the more I I think about it it's I, I just I still kind of stand by it was just kind of a weird show like we, so we had hard to kill and we had rebellion and those were incredible pay-per-views very very well balanced with who was winning and the titles changing and uh I just didn't get that with Slammiversary. I gave them the benefit of the doubt because they don't really put on bad pay-per-views. But for me, I'm speaking for me, the matches were too long. 
Uh, some of the matches didn't matter, and they were still long. And then we kind of get to the main event where, well, I mean, then you get to the X Division Championship, which you're like, wow, this match is incredible. And then it gets overbooked very, very quickly. And then we get the main event, which I don't think had a lot of hype behind it. But then we ha- we're going into it. Moose gets the early elimination. We're like, oh, shit. Josh gets a heel turn. We're like, oh, shit. Like, like my first reaction was, okay, they've been booking this entire show for the crowd. Now they're going to throw some fucking shit at us. Now they're going to throw some heat. When Josh had that heel turn, I was like, oh, my God, Josh is going to win the title. And then by the end of the night, it was appease the audience again. Uh, Nick Nemeth going to win. And then we're going to have the feel-good moment at the end. All the champions are going to come out. Personally, what I think, I say this time and time again. I've said it time and time again, that they stick to the script. And I think when they brought Nick Nemeth on, they said, hey, we're you know, we're going to keep you on for whatever, a year or two years, whatever. Probably a year, probably a year. Uh, halfway through that, we'll put the world title on you. And that's how the booking came off. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. But that's how the booking came off to me. Where they said, well, we can't, we we stick to the script. Nick Nemeth is supposed to win at Slammiversary. So we can't, we can't deviate from that. But we can capitalize off Joe Hendry's popularity. He's not going to win because we can't let him win because we already have other plans and we can build other stories within the match. And that is kind of what they did. But the, just the fact that Josh didn't win has to be because Nick Nemeth was promised this title a while back. That's that is the only thing that I can even wrap my head around being a thing. So WWE shoot interviews, you'll hear, you know, Butch Reed said I was supposed to be the one to beat um damn, who did he beat? I'm I'm, th- I'm trying to think when Honky Tonk Man won the uh Intercontinental Championship. Was it Tito Santana? I don't remember exactly, but you know, Butch Reed back, well, I was the one who was supposed to win this. Or uh Tito Santana at one point, I was supposed to be the one that beat Ric Flair for the world title, but they went with the hitman. You know, like so many plans change, but it seems like that's the only company willing to make those changes on the fly. And I don't think they do that in, in TNA. I don't think they do an AEW for that matter. I don't think, I don't think they do enough on the fly. So I think they came into across the situation here where they said, well, Nick Nemeth has to win the title because we promised him he was going to be the champion. So we got to build stories within it because uh, we can change those. We can, we can move those pieces around. And I guess I'm interested to see the Josh heel, Versus Joe Hendry, I mean, that's kind of a big thing. That's a good story. It's an excellent story. Let me... The fact that they pulled the trigger on this, it was much needed for Josh, but it's a it's a tremendous story. Like the, It really has the opportunity to be the best story of the year, and I mean by, by a long shot. Whatever feud they got with him and, and Joe Hendry could be incredible. There's possibilities of reuniting the North at this point, because they're both heels. I mean, there's the, the possibilities are endless what they can truly do here. But the overall impact of him not winning the world title or at least coming down to being part of the last two to where you had this guy with mega heat going against Nick Nemeth, it, it's just weird, man, because I, I know they had a storyline with Frankie. And I mean, I still don't think anyone cared that he was in the, in, in the bottom two or the top two, you should say. I really think if it was Josh and Nick Nemeth, you know, it would have been a much bigger deal. But no one expected Nick Nemeth to win this thing. I should say they didn't win, expect him to win this particular match because I think everyone assumed he would win the title at some point. TNA does not bring in this level of talent to not be a champion. That just doesn't happen. Historically, that doesn't happen. But um, just weird show, good show, just weird show. And was it was it because things were impacted by the by what happened with the travel? Mm, I don't know. But for me, it was like really, really questionable a lot of the booking, but I don't work in wrestling. So one thing I've been learning with TNA is that they're right now doing a better job of seeing the where they want to get uh, you know, three, four months from now. They're not, you know. 
I've learned to be patient. So I'm trying to be patient. We should be patient. But aside from Josh turning heel, there's nothing that happened out of here that's like, I want to turn on the TV on Thursday. I don't want to see PCL with the belts. I don't really care about Mike Bailey being champion just because I I think Ali is the best performer in the company at the moment. Are they going to – what other championships we got? Are they going to uh, shoehorn Steph DeLander and Zaya Brookside into a tag team to wrestle for – the rest of the system for the tag team titles. Uh, I thought, I think ABC being the champions again is a tad bland. Like there's, there's nothing that came out of this that makes me want to turn on the TV on Thursday, aside from Josh Alexander's heel turn. I'm really looking forward to hearing him cut that heel promo and just how, how did they change this guy's presentation? Will he get new music? Probably not. Will he change his ring gear? Probably not. But I think there's so much that they should they should do with him, and I'm I'm very excited for that. So we'll see, folks. But um, yeah, Jordan made some promises, and I think that we have to stop promising surprises and booking, because frankly, uh, you know, AEW built their shows off surprises for so long that now those surprises don't exist, and they're not as well received. You know, they're they're pay per views. And if if TNA just books a good show and and there's heat and there's storylines people care about and they get appropriate payoffs or if they don't get paid off they you know the heel gets a victory and they they find creative ways to it to uh, to carry the storylines forward then the fans will go home happy. But here all the heels lost, so it seems like they're going to completely reset the storylines. But I hope that they do a good job of that up to Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory does not have a history of a tremendous build or a very focused build. That is that is usually the pay-per-view. It's a little more thrown together than Slammiversary is. So I really, truly do hope they have a nice build in store because no one has any kind of heat except for Josh coming out of this pay-per-view. So you've got a lot of work to do between now and Bound for Glory. <laughs> 